Hello gentle viewers, this is Vindian welcoming you back to Paths of Glory via Tabletop Simulator. I just realized I forgot to take the, the little tokens off of the board for the allies and the central powers. I'm just doing that right now. Uh, last episode we saw probably one of the most epic battles so far, uh, the Battle of Chateau Terry. And because of uh, because of the way things look right now, it would not be a shock to see a second battle like that. Um, so we're going to see what happens this episode, but there is every possibility that we could see another even bigger battle of Chateau Terry. Um, we've also seen, uh, one of the Austrian capitals fall in Budapest, uh, which alarmed Germany so much so that they've actually sent several corps, uh, down to Vienna. Um, for Austria only, because they have two capitals, which no other country in the game has, losing one capital doesn't actually matter. It just means that new units would have to go in Vienna. Now, eventually they're going to want to break this up because right now if they added a new unit, uh, it would not be able to be placed because of stacking rules. Because um, Austria can only place new units in Austria, Hungary, and either Vienna or Budapest. Um, just like Germany can't place them in Vienna, Austria can't place them in Berlin. Uh, it is the summer of 1916. <clears throat> and there's the strategic situation is very interesting um especially in the eastern front because while on the one hand germany is doing a lot of damage to to western russia and poland and the baltic states there's every possibility that russia could maybe outright cripple austria this turn Um, they could really use some reinforcements to really make that happen, and maybe that'll happen, and maybe it won't. But this is a very interesting episode, and it may end up being the last one, depending on how a few different things break down. Um, let us switch to the Central Power side. You know, the Near East hasn't really changed much, and I often find that it doesn't. Unless Russia surrenders, because then this is one of the few places that, with relatively low effort, that an allied player can pick up some easy uh, VPs. And even then, easy is very much a matter of relativeness. Um, like, I can't even take Medina without the, uh, the ANA as the allies. I could take Count Santinople, sure, but that would be a pretty big slog for a pretty minor payout. And I think that's one of the reasons why, for the Allied player, if the Near East does nothing, you're kind of okay with that. Um, I mean, there is this, this Russian VP sitting here in Baku. But again, we're talking a pretty long, protracted campaign to make that happen, so... Oh, we can't play that card yet. Uh, German reinforcements sound quite good. Uh, Prince Max is pretty good. The Tsar hasn't fallen yet. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's decent, and that's whatever. It's hard to get excited about the withdrawal card. I like that they're in the game, but there's so few times where it's going to be helpful to you that it's almost always just better to do things. The one thing I haven't done all game, and I'm not going to do it now, but I could have done, is you have the choice when you draw cards to discard any combat cards. Um, I'm just not going to do that because I don't think it makes a lot of sense to me. Now... Um, right. What would be the most beneficial thing for us to do right now as essential powers? Obviously, re-surrounding 
Verdun would be a pretty big priority. Because if we don't do it soon, um, there's a chance that they could just do a breakout. Which would not be good, obviously. Not for our purposes. Um... And as much as I would love to play and get another army into the game for Germany, or even increase our war status by three, because that puts us much, much closer to um, Yeah, like, I can... I'm just waiting to be able to trigger Fall of the Tsar. For which I need... Uh, this status needs to be a lot higher. Because right now... Um, actually, do we have... We have Tsar Takes Command, but we don't have, like, a fancy schmancy token for it. That's fine. Um, what's the point I was trying to make here? The point I was trying to make is that if we play Prince Max, we could then later play Fall of the Tsar because we currently have one, two, three, four Russian VPs. So if this is a 29, that equals 33 plus, and we'd be able to play that card if we had it. But we have to be very careful, though, because... We don't want the Zimmerman telegram to be allowed and to let the Allies get the U.S. involved. But there's give or take. There's give or take. And we can, we can explore that further. Like, there's no rush to do it right now. It's better because I don't even have the Fall of the Tsar card, which is somewhere else in my deck of 31 cards. But it wouldn't be a bad idea to get Russia out of the war. So we will consider that later on. Uh, but for right now... Hmm. There is no Russian trench right now. So I'm actually going to go ahead and play Russian Desert... Not Russian Desertion, sorry. A Von Hutier. I'm going to play this card for Ops. And then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with my Ops. As long as I keep cutting off Fair Done. This is the main thing for me. As long as I keep cutting it off, I force the Allies to react to me. Which is huge, right? It's absolutely massive. As long as they have to react to me, um, I can then send other units up. I can pick up these easy VPs. I have tons and tons of options available to me. Um, technically, Calais can be retaken as soon as they move a unit in there. I just don't really care right now. Especially if the Brits only have one core left. And if I remember correctly, the, uh, the PT core cannot be used to replace... Um, I'm trying to remember what actually created... What actually creates that particular card... Or that particular unit, rather. Because um, I'm pretty sure the PT Corps <clears throat> cannot replace a British army. So, yeah. Um, which means if we can reduce this British army enough, it's gone from the game. And that would be huge. Because all the other British core are actually out on the board. Um, 
So I've got three unit. I've got three spaces to activate. I'm going to go ahead and activate Vienna. And the reason I'm going to activate V... Oh, I didn't roll for uh, mandated defensives. Let me do that real quick. Uh, oh no, I have to attack as Germany. How would I... Why would I ever do that? And then you have to attack with Italy. That's actually kind of annoying, but whatever. Knowing that they're, that they're going to want to attack with Italy is pretty strong incentive to go ahead and send... Activate this space. No. Shit. I want a stalemate here as a central powers. I don't want them to get... I don't want to basically hand them Vienna. Because that would be crippling to Austria. I cannot lose Vienna. Even if it means losing other spaces. So I'm actually just going to pull out the core. And I'm going to put this core in... Uh, one, two, three. In Trieste. That way I can still add more units here. But this is still a very dicey proposition for the AI to try. For the APs to try, actually. So that was one of my three ops. My other two ops are quite simple. I'm going to activate Sedan and Barley Duke for attack. This is still too huge an opportunity for me to ignore it. Now, there is one very sneaky thing the French could do. One incredibly sneaky thing the French could do. Which is have... Ooh, you know what? That is actually so sneaky that I just realized I'm going to go ahead and put this back. This little pissant French corps could go one, two, three, four and take Metz. If they do that, Supply to Verdun gets reopened, and I don't want that. So I'm going to take the weaker of the two armies here and put it in Metz. And that's what I'm going to do with my first op. All I need is enough to distract this core from trying to make the super huge uh, end around play. And then I'm going to activate both these spaces for attack. Um, do I have any sneaky cards to play? Uh, only against Russians. And then if I switch back to... So I'm going to say I'm not playing any cards. Uh, whoops. What does this do? Pending. And a non of fort space. Okay. Now the ANA is going to be pretty interesting. Two Russian core doesn't really do much for me, but it's not the worst. Now, very, very important here. It is summer, so that actually means this card can't be used. And then there's some more British reinforcements. Okay. So they also don't have a combat card to play, which is what I was most important, which is what was most important to me. Uh, so we're just going to roll off. It's going to be 17 versus 4. Not that that matters. Actually, it does matter. It gets me to the farthest uh, column. Okay, a 2 on a 17 is 5 losses, a 1 on a 4 is 2 losses. Oh, uh, that is going to cost me this core. Um, I'm not happy about it, but there's certainly a lot worse that could happen to us. I inflicted 5 losses, so they're going to get reduced. And the margin is big enough that they're going to have to retreat 2 spaces. So they're probably going to do something like one, and then probably two to go to Amiens. Um, I advance with probably the arm. No, not the army and Barley Duke, because then they can just go around me. I'm just going to move one of these armies up. And once again, the Verdun forces are placed out of supply.
Because again, they can only draw to certain locations, all of which are either controlled by me or reinforced by me. Now, there is still very much a chance, but it's becoming increasingly dodgy, that the Brits and French do a giant attack from Paris to try to break up Chateau Terry. Um, and it would get even better, obviously, if they moved in a new army, right? So that may be what they end up doing. But let's see what the Allies want to do with their turn. So I can't play Yanks and Tanks as an event. I can't play everyone into battle because I don't have any of those things. You know, I'm going to go ahead and play Cloak and Dagger as the first card just because it makes really good sense. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because it gives me two ops, right? And it's just free. It's just free ops, basically. I get to look at their hand. I already know what their hand is. And now I know that they've got a pretty powerful hand for attacking. And that they really, really, really want a card they don't have yet. Which is the Fall of the Tsar. Because uh, it'll be allowed as soon as... It's not allowed now, is it? It's not. Okay. Uh, and then I get to do two ops. So, what would I like to do here? Um. What would I like to do is the allies here. With only two ops... I have basically one option if I want to try to rescue the army in Verdun, which is attacking in Chateau Terry with only two core. I'm not saying that's not a fight we can't win, but I'm saying that it's pretty unlikely. Also, I have a really nasty plan for next turn that I literally just thought of. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that next turn for the Central Powers. Oh man, I'm gonna hate that so much when I do the thing that I'm going to do. So what do I want to do with my two ops? Um... A counterattack here is... Like, on the surface, this is a fairly low-grade attack, but it would force them to waste another core to keep this army from being removed from the game, and it also enables us the chance to retake Belgrade with these Bulgarian forces. I can't do that. The Bulgarians are from the Central Powers. What the hell is wrong with me? I tried to do something that was illegal. Um... There is some attraction to moving into Kronstadt with Romanian forces. But I just I just really think there are better things to spend my time on. So I'm going to go, I'm activate two spaces, right? I want to hit Tarnov and then attack Krakow. Krakow is actually very vulnerable, except for the trench. Uh, so that is something to consider when fighting. Um, Krakow is only one VP. I could go one, two, three, but then they could just move in and cut off my supply. And that would be very stupid. The thing is that Tarnov is really screwing up my supply lines. It's really screwing up my supply lines. 
I don't like that. But right now, I just don't have the raw manpower. I need to start, basically, I need to start relieving some of this manpower. I have to. And one of the things that means, it means getting rid of Austrian units where I can. Because every core... So, I mean, is it worth it? I just don't know if it's worth it. Like, okay, I could attack... Using the, the the Near East Army, I could wipe out this one Libyan unit. Who cares? That really doesn't affect things for me. It doesn't really make it possible to, to really gain VPs. And that's the worst part of this entire thing. Uh, that's the worst part about the Near East. It's designed to be a quagmire. It's designed to suck in British units and give them something else to do if they can't attack uh, here. And I could very easily move this army into Amiens and retake Calais. And maybe there's value in doing that. But it's, it's a really hard ask to find two good operations to do this turn. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do here. I'm going to move up this unit. That'll be one. I'm not going to move up this zero core. That's stupid. So that's one. Um, this army is in a really awkward place. You know what? If I want to freaking retake Belgrade, I could do it right now. Like, it's obviously a pretty big distraction. Or do you just want to pull this Russian army here? Maybe I do. Yeah, I'm just going to do that with my other move. Let's get three armies in Budapest. That was a whole lot of deliberation for what ended up being a pretty a pretty non-event event. But it had to happen. Um now, I have a very nasty possibility that's really going to make this an impossible situation for them, which is to dig in to entrench and Chateau Terry. Because then I've got this bad boy uh, and I've got more options, and it just makes it worse for them. And I kind of like that idea. I kind of like it a lot. And it's like reducing four units is really good. But until I get the fall of the Tsar anyway... Mmm... Let me quickly check the manual. I can't remember how hard it is to actually trigger Bolshevik revolution or resolu revolution allowed. Because maybe this is kind of a null turn where I just hope to try to get some important cards. Um, I'm checking the Russian revolution rules. Bear with me. Where does it put those? War and peace. Okay, so in order to get the Bolshevik Revolution to trigger, either we have to see, we have to basically have one more VP than we had when the Tsar fell, or we have to have everything but Baku. And then it's permitted. So basically, all that would need to happen is you need to trigger the fall of the Tsar before Riga falls. 
That's kind of a tall ask. And there's not really an easy way to get to Kiev unless... Yeah, there's just not an easy way to get there. Hell, fucking Bulgaria attacking Odessa is more reasonable in a lot of ways. And I don't have the fall of the Tsar card, which is the really big issue. And that holds up everything else. Is that number accurate? Is it three? One, two, three, four. No, that should actually be four. There we go. So it's four and 26. It's already 30. It needs to be 33. Um, These are really strong cards. And it's a real shame that we kind of have to burn... All right. I'm going to try and experiment. And this may not work out for us, but if it does work out, it's going to make our lives so much easier. I am not going to play a card. I'm going to take one op. I'm going to use that op. I'm going to activate Chateau Terry, and I'm going to try to entrench. If I can dig in here very, very quickly, all of a sudden, the strategic calculus changes. I can buy some time, play the German 4th Army, the 11th Army, or the 14th Army, and get them involved. There is very little I am not willing to sacrifice as a central powers to keep them from reestablishing supply here. And if they want to throw two core and an army from Amiens into a forest go for it oh actually there's arguably i could i could entrench in either place um no i'm not gonna do that i'd rather try to entrench in both places i'm gonna play von francois because i really do not anticipate on playing uh, attacking russia this turn all right now i have to remind myself what i have to roll in order to entrench and every time you fail at entrenching, by the way, you get to put a minus one in it, which is pretty sweet. It's pretty, pretty good. Or it has to be equal to or less than the army's... Uh, equal to or less than the army's loss factor. And then if it fails, it does that. So that's a loss less than the loss factor... I basically just can't roll a six. So I'm going to go ahead and roll twice and hope I don't get two sixes. That's a five. That's equal or less. That's a three. That's equal or less. So I just put out... I don't need the whole bag game. I just got two trenches. In Chateau Terry and Sedan. And this now becomes a much more difficult nut to crack. I'm not saying they can't do it, but I am saying it's an incredibly difficult sale to break through and cause havoc. Now, there is another option. And maybe that's going to trigger an alternate action from the Allies, which is pull these two British corps, go one, two, three, and get ready to attack them next turn. Um, that's a four loss factor on a core, though, which, even if you roll maximum, isn't going to be enough to disrupt this army in mass. They basically have to bring an army with them, which they could do, obviously. Uh, I can move this, this unit from Amiens, and then we have a little bit more firepower. But this is a much more dangerous situation for them, and there are no easy ways to guarantee that you can extricate Verdun. Um, if the central powers hadn't gone first, they, I probably would have just pulled two armies out of Verdun and said, if you want Verdun that badly, take it. But that's not an option right now. 
And so as the allies, I'm in a really tough situation right now. I'm in an incredibly tough situation. Um... This card is kind of stupid. Um, they just kind of... This card is, is kind of stupid, and I think we need the ops. Um, the Aus core and the Canadian core. I wonder where those can go. That's going to be under... Reinforcements. Oh, that's right. They go into the reserve box. So they don't even get to go out onto the board right away. This is a pretty obvious card to play. Um, I don't know why they include that may only be played if Turkey is at war. As far as I know, there's no way to get Turkey out of the war early. Um, look. I'm going to play everyone into battle. And the question is, am I going to do strategic redeployment? Or am I going to do... Um, we're going to do ops. I'm not going to lie... Four core in the Chateau Terry, when it's entrenched, is probably a suicide. And remember, I know what the Central Powers player has. And what the Central Powers, Powers player has is a card that lets them defend better if they're entrenched. That's probably a lose-lose situation. I don't see that turning out well for us. And again, let's check our chart here, right? I would have to get a pretty insane die roll because I'd have a total of six. But then it gets pushed over to the left because of the trench. They'd have to basically get a six on their die roll in order to reduce this even by one step. That ain't good. And I also know that Germany's got another army that they're just looking for an excuse to put onto the board. Which is equally not good. So, now, I could use my ops and I could just start trying to cause some havoc here in Austria. That's always an option available to us. Is it a good option, though? Mm, hard to say. But it is an option. It is definitely an option. This stupid core is so irritating. I don't have to fight this core at all. Oh my god. I'm such an idiot. Watch. Okay, let's say I'm going to use that card for ops, which I was going to do anyway. Are you ready? Are you ready to see how easy this could have been? Done. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. If you've been shouting at me since last episode, like, Avi, how can you miss how easy it would be to cut off that core supply? I'm really sorry. Uh, I feel like such an idiot. That was, like, such an easy decision. I can't even describe to you how easy that decision was. Um... That's one thing. I wish I had some combat cards right now.
Because the idea of bumping off these two armies and, again, just keep pressuring them is great, right? But this is a mountain and it's a trench. And that's just going to wreck my offensive fire capabilities. Here it's less important, right? Like here that would push my offensive fire back two steps, but it can never go less than one. And yes, it pushes theirs one to the right, but that's still unlikely to be enough to chase one of these armies. Honestly, I probably could have attacked this a long time ago. I just didn't think of it. Um, oh God, I feel like such an idiot. This whole bloody time, I literally have one core and this core is gone. SMH my head. Um, no, I can't cut off Tarnoff with just a core. Because they could still draw supply back through Krakow. Which then lets them take their supply from, uh, from Breslau. I gotta remember I have this army that's just sitting here doing nothing. I could really use that army over on the Western Front. Um... So what do we do here? If I retake Belgrade, I cut off this core. Not that this core is really a threat, but I could do it. In fact, I could... No, you can't flank attack with a core, can you? I don't think cores can do flank attacks. Yeah, it has to be an army. Okay. Like, I could easily spend one Romanian core and one Russian core, hope to get a relatively big win, and then retake Belgrade. And then I can even reinforce Serbian forces. The only reason I haven't been able to do it up to now is because of that. Um, are there any rules on where British Corps can go? Because I'll be honest. Getting Britain involved against Bulgaria? Mm, probably not terribly smart. Never mind. I need so many RPs. Oh my lord. Um, all right. Two. <coughs> um, do I pull out this French core from Antwerp? Or do I use it to annoy the Germans? Like, I could honestly send one French corps to take Essen and Aachen. And that would be kind of funny because it would basically eliminate a source of supply. And I need to see where they can supply to. Um, so I have to trace it to a friendly controlled supply source. But they can use German and Russian support to trace to, say, Constantinople. So you can never, like, cut off the entire army. Right? Um, that's right, isn't it? No, they have to use Germany and Russian supports to trace supply. 
So does that mean if I take Essen and Breslau that I've cut that have put the entire German army and and the entire Austrian army? I mean they could theoretically trace to Bulgaria, but can they trace to the Ottomans overland? Barely. Like there's a path there. But it would be incredibly challenging. I mean, is that just, like, being funny? Oh, no, you can't get to S in this turn. I keep forgetting there's no way to get from Antwerp to Aachen. It'd be one, two, three, four. I'll be honest, this French core's not doing anybody any favors right now. So how's about we go... Get you out of there. This core has to do something. Right now it's just sitting here defending a space that's not that important. Like, yes, a VP is a VP is a VP. How many actual moves have I made? I've just made one, right? Or have I made two? I made one. I sent the remaining core to Kronstadt to cut them off. That's one. Um, we've only actually made the one move. No, I didn't. I made a second move. I pulled the British army from Amiens into uh, Cambrai. That's what that is, right? Yeah. So we got, what is it? One more or two more ops? I've got two more ops. Um... Um, look. I could use the Arabian army and do a lot of damage and take a couple of easy VPs that way next turn. So there's a reason to play that card as an event. I know I'm I'm kind of spinning my wheels here, but... All right, you know what I'm going to do? This is ridiculously OP. Three... As long as this is threatening Alexandria, I can't really get involved. And once this is gone, I can start pushing the north or the Near Eastern Army. I keep saying Northeastern, Near Eastern Army against places like Gaza and get them up to like Damascus and Mosul and things like that. So that's three. Um. A fourth move. Is there a good fourth move? I mean, I guess I could pull this French core back toward Paris. Yeah, you know what? That's actually kind of smart. One, two, three, four. There we go. That turn took a very long time. But I'm hoping that that was the right call. Um, I've got this armory in Breslau. I'm really doing nothing with it. Um... Strategic redeployment could be really smart here. Like, I could just drop him in Sedan and just end everything. Like, that basically forces them to attack Chateau Terry with a pretty powerful card to even have a chance at doing some damage. You know what else I could do that would be even smarter? Why didn't I think of this? Why have I not been trying to attack them? Like, I don't even care if we win the battle. All I'm trying to do 
is stop them from taking Chateau Terry back. So two ops could be incredibly well spent. Do two to attack Cambrai. And remember, if I wipe out this British army, it is gone forever and can never be replaced. I'm probably going to wreck the core pretty bad too. And I can just choose not to advance. I can put the fate of this operation in my own hands rather than just waiting for the Allies to decide. Because if I cut off Verdun and wipe out everything there, that's probably a victory for the Central Powers. Because there's just no way the Allies are going to be able to get enough VPs to stop me from just looting France. And France has lots of VPs in it. And heck, I can even use the, the use France and sneak around to Italy. Although, technically speaking, I don't think Germany can move into Italy, can it? Um, so I thought there were different rules about where people could move. Um, but maybe not. I mean, it would make for a very vulnerable supply chain. That's probably the main reason why they can't. Um, let me quickly check that out here. Oh, units can enter Albania, even though Albania is actually considered neutral. Neat. Um... Okay, here we go. There is a rule. The BEF core or army can only attack or move into certain spaces, but that's those specific spaces, so... That's fine. Um, right. Then the best thing I could possibly do now is attack Cambrai. Because even if I lose, uh, I'm gonna do a lot... I'm gonna wreck them. I'm going to do a lot of damage and possibly force them to remove this army. Like, it's either sacrifice two core and the threat ends, or sacrifice the army and the threat ends. We're talking about a 10, right? If I get a good roll on this, I could wipe the floor with these units. That would be so tremendously huge, and that would just free everything else up for me. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and play Withdrawal for Ops. And I'm going to go ahead and say Sedan and Chateau Terry activated for attack. Even if I take losses here, and I very well might, the trenches give me enough strength that this attack is definitely worth it to me. Honestly, I probably could have attacked these core earlier and made it an even bigger cakewalk, but this it just makes too much sense. So, no combat cards for either side. We go and roll. One and a two. Uh, on a ten, that does three losses. Uh, what is your total level here? You are a seven, a one on a seven. Sorry, two on a seven is three losses. So is a 1 on a 10. Um, that's fine. It's not the ideal result, um, but I'm going to go ahead and reduce the 1 here in Sedan. Uh, they take 3 losses. They're either going to nuke their core and lose one, or they're going to lose their army. And they know if they lose their army, they'll never be able to replace it. So they're going to go 1, 2, and then that gets removed. Three. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, back to the allies. Now, this makes a challenging situation that much harder 
for the Allies. Because there now appears to be, at the very least, a new a new route of attack. Which is getting three ops, attacking from Cambrai in Paris, and attacking Chateau Terry. But there's still the bloody trench. And that trench gives you pause. And remember, I got to see their hand. I know they've got that plus one lurking in their hand. But here's the real issue for me. I don't know that we can afford not to do it. There's none of these cards in my hand will help me deal with the situation any better in two turns than it will right now. Whereas if we get a really lucky roll, even if they play their machine gun, There's still a chance with a lucky die roll that we can force them to retreat, we destroy the trench, and we retake Chateau Terry. There's going to be casualties. I can't avoid that. But losing three French armies just completely fucks us as the, as the allies. Like, there's, there's no coming back from that, in my opinion. Because then there's a cakewalk to Paris. They can loot... All of these lovely French spaces, they can start pushing into Italy from the rear. It's too good an opportunity. And yes, there's every chance that Russia could knock out Austria, and it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Like, I can't even do crazy core shit and get them to move in. I can make my life easier, but I can't make it winnable unless we win this battle. And even then, like, let me be clear on this. Even then, even if we win this battle, it still doesn't end the threat. Because then they can just counterattack again. And this is going to be a bloody battle no matter what happens, but I think it has to happen. I cannot afford to let them hold this uncontested bring up another army because remember i know that they got that ticking time bomb they can just drop it in essen and move up into like sedan and then it's definitely game over so yeah uh we're gonna do it we're gonna play severe weather for ops no i can't do that i have to play at least a three don't i yanks and tanks i love that card it's got a lot of potential but if I lose the game, it doesn't matter if I used it or not. So that's going to take me three ops. And I solution with one more. Oh, I never resolved that, did I? Last time. Sorry, I should have done that real quick. It's six and two. It's more than enough to obliterate that. And that's not enough to, to cause... That cause one damage, whatever. You're gone. Okay. Oh, and this gets removed from the game because the little dot. So I just go a boop. And we never see it again. Uh, so the one move I'm going to make is I'm going to go ahead and go with my one extra space. I'm going to go one, two, three. I believe I can still enter. I can enter. It's not combat. It's just a space. Let me double check that. Plus Sinai is British anyway, I think. Maybe? No, it's not. Maybe not. Let me double check the movement rule. For the desert. Uh, trenches. Okay. Let me check the special rules. Sorry, friends. I keep doing this a lot, but it's it's important to make sure that I get this right. Especially the game ends up ending this turn. Which it might. Um, here we go. I can trace through Port Said to get to London. It's a tax. 
Okay, desert restrictions in summer. Yeah. I can move, but I can't attack. So that's fine. All right. And then the other three, it's Battle of Chateau Terry 2. Germany very predictably says, I would like to play my machine gun card, please. And note, this card doesn't get removed from the game. Um, which is going to make this... This is going to be bad no matter what happens. Thanks to that plus one. So this is going to be 3, 4, 5, 6 versus 3. And then we'll get into trench stuff here in a second. Oh no, and Germany got a six. All right. So trenches pull offensive fire one to the left and defensive one to the right. Which means that's four losses. Because it's five plus one for six, that's four losses there. The allies total have... One, three, five, six. But they get pushed one to the left. Into the five column. Which means they inflict four losses. This could have been a lot worse than it was, but it's still pretty bad because the most important thing is there's no advance. And yes, four losses. Uh, this army is removed and it's going to get replaced by a core which will instantly be reduced that's rough but they must try to meet the loss factor you cannot choose to take less than a loss factor which means because it is possible for them to get four losses they have to take four losses so this is extremely bad news for the Allies. And let me just make sure that my understanding of the loss rule is appropriate. Yes. So this means they cannot choose to sacrifice all three corps and keep the army. They have to sacrifice the army, which is removed from the game, and one of these corps. And it's probably, honestly, going to end up being this British Corps. Oh, Lord, this box is getting crowded. And there's no advance because they each had equal amounts. Now, there is an ever so tiny, insignificant little bonus. Which is that because I did not win the battle, I did not get more losses than my opponent, I don't get to keep my machine guns. I have to discard those, right? Um, defenders can't advance. Purposes of combat cards. Um, I think... Yeah, they're saying both players are considered lost. So I do lose my machine gun card. But this card is MVP because it's literally basically cracked this open. All I have to do is move up an army like this one here from Nancy. I mean, they could outflank me. The problem is not entirely resolved. But it's very much closer to being resolved than it has been before. Uh, right. Central Powers time. The trench is still here. If they want even a chance to retake Chateau Terry, they're going to have to move this core to Amiens, or to, uh, to either Paris or Cambrai. 
They have to do it. Uh, because even a reduced strength core is still pretty doggone dangerous. And I could just swap, right? I could just swap. I mean, yes, then they could try to hit me in bar -le -Duc or whatever. I need another army up there as Germany. That basically ends any chance of their success. The problem is I don't have a spare army to put in there. If I move... Let's say I take this army out of Nancy. And I go one, two. This army could go one, two, three, four. For, no, they can't get to Nancy in one turn. Interesting. You know what would really fuck up their shit, though? That would be even more deadly. Oh, strategic redeployment. How many core do I have? I have so many core. Oh, that would be, that would be it. That would be it. Do it. Uh, I'm not going to bring in the German 14th Army. It's actually more viable to me right now to do strategic redeployment. I can bring in four core, and they just have to be with another unit of that nationality, right? So let me make sure it doesn't have to be an army. But I think it can be any unit of that nationality. Um, any unit containing a supplied unit of the same nationality. Oh, interesting. For this strategic, re uh, strategic redeployment, we can't use Austrian cores into or out of the box. It's either or for Austria. It's not both. Does that mean Austria also cannot do replenishment points? Yeah, interesting. So I can basically never replenish Austria. Okay. I don't know if I did that last game or not, but if I did, I apologize. But yeah, I basically can never restore Austrian units, any losses they take are permanent, until they retake uh, Vienna. Or, yeah, Vienna is the one. No, Budapest is the one I have. Sorry. I didn't... I thought you had to take both of them. It actually doesn't seem to take either or. Oh, well. Uh, right. Oh, I met the German attack way long ago. I'm just going to push that over. All right. Uh, so... Strategic redeployment may not be the brilliant decision I thought it was. Because here's the issue. I can redeploy... No, I can redeploy it for German Corps. I just can't put them all in the same space. Um, and the more units they have to push forward to try to break through at Chateau Terry, it just gives me more chances to counterattack and fuck up their shit. So I'm going to do strategic redeployment. I'm going to do core number one, core number two, um, core number three, core number four. So I've got five cores sitting in Chateau Terry, and cores can take advantage of entrenchments. Uh, even if they couldn't, though, I don't think it would be smart for the allied player to attack. Because we're getting to the point where it's just not, it's not productive. We're beating our heads against the wall. Um... Yeah, cores can, can take advantage of your trenches here. Yeah, there's... Like, even if... Like, let's say, for instance, as a thing which they could probably think about doing, 
we strategically redeploy here, well, that's not going to help because there's only one French Corps anyway. And one French Corps ain't going to do shit. Yeah, I've got the thing to bring in two other core or whatever, but this is... This may be game over next turn. It really might be. Just because I don't see any way for them to break this stalemate. At best, at absolute best, I play Ops as the Allied player. I move this core up from Amiens. I strategically redeploy to bring in another British, another French core. That still screws us because that's not going to be enough to break through a five strength core. Oh, and by the way, a trench. So that is it for the central powers turn. The allies have a lot of thinking to do. I can get two British core. I can get two British core. But they'd go the strategic, they'd go to the box, not to the map. Two Russian core, I don't even care. Um Yeah. This is real bad times for the Allies. The best they can do, honestly, is just try to cause even more chaos here in uh, Austria. And maybe hope that they can, like, grab Berlin. But even that's a tall order. And even though Austria can't reinforce... I mean, I could throw Italy at them. That's important. I could throw Italy at them. I could strategically redeploy to bring in a more Italian core and then attack uh, Austria from Italy. And that's going to cause some issues, for sure. Is it going to cause enough issues to break the game? Doubtful. Very doubtful. I mean, I could just, like, take Munich... Because remember, moving points are one point. It only matters for combat purposes. So I could just take this core, run into Munich, and then watch as my supply gets cut. Um, so I think strategic redeployment or replenishing points makes a ton of sense. Because if we're ever going to retake parts of France, we're going to need more units. And that means replenishment points. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spend this Russian reinforcements card. Because two core ain't going to cut it for our piece. That's going to be one British, one French, and one Russian. Now Germany comes back in. <clears throat> the thing is, all of these cards are awesome. And they're going to go ahead and play Total War, or sorry, Prince Max, just as the card says. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now Follow the Star is allowed. Because 29 and 4 is 33. It has to be 33 or higher. And that's just removed from the game. Back to the Allies. And the Allies are thinking, right now this turn hasn't been bad for VP purposes. We need to do something to shake things up, and the thing to shake things up is probably attacking Italy, is attacking with Italy. But I also want to play the Arab Northern Army, because it's a really strong card, but I can't attack this turn anyway. So I can hang on to this and play it next turn. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play They Shall Not Pass. 
because I'm about to lose the French Fort. I'm going to play this for strategic redeployment. And I'm going to bring in the two Italian Corps. I'm going to go a one, a two. That actually makes more sense. Because roughing up two armies is going to do a lot more damage to them than roughing up three core. Especially because they're very all the core they have in their reserve box are only... Uh, what's your years? And they can't pull armies out of the cores either. They can't pull cores out of there, so whatever. So that's their turn. Uh, and now the Central Powers take their last turn. They really don't want to play any of these cards. These cards are really good. They might even be able to play them next turn. Uh, instead, they're going to go ahead and probably gain RP. Oh, no, they can't. They're just going to go ahead and play an op. One op. Um... If I attack Cambrai, I'm again, I'm not even trying to advance. I'm just trying to kill their units. Oh, no, that's not true for for France, I don't think. <coughs> Let me check replenishment. Yeah, if it's being besieged, Oh, damn. There's actually a lot of value in attacking Paris. Like, a lot of value in doing it. With this last op. I besiege Paris. Maybe it falls, maybe it doesn't. I don't really care. What I do care is that it's besieged. And that means they can't play RP. They can use reinforcements, but they can't play RP. And that means any French units stay crappy. That's a really strong move with my last stop. I just need to double check and make sure that you can besiege using... No, it can be a core. There we go. Oh, and it's actually any army can besiege a fort. It's only has to be a number of core equal to that. So besieging Paris with a core is very doable. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to activate this space for attack, and it's going to be 5v1. <clears throat> uh, what? Okay. So I got a six. They got a two. They're going to reduce one of my units. But I just flat out wrecked Paris. Like, it's gone. I just took the French capital of Paris with one core. That fort is destroyed because the loss number was so big. So it just goes right to destroyed. And the allies at this point are like, I thought this turn couldn't get any worse. I was wrong. And then we switch back to the allies. And the allies are like, well, fuck. I can't even replenish half the units I can. I can't use my French RPs because Paris has fallen. Um... I mean, I can, I, yeah, I can't use RP. It quite deliberately says that. The Orléans rule only applies to reinforcements. Um, yeah. Oh, the Belgian army doesn't get recreated in London. It gets recreated in Brussels, Antwerp, or Ostend. Okay. 
12, there we go. Yeah, this is very, very bad news for the Allies. At this point, what would help them more? Two more British Corps or the Arab Northern Army? Let's get the Arab Northern Army. That counts as a British reinforcement. No, wait. No, 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 no. I'm disrupting my plan. I had a plan. I'm just getting distracted because Paris fell. I can't afford to lose another VP, and there's enough value to punching Austria, kicking Austria when they're down. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to attack from Udine into Trieste using a single op. So it's going to be four on two. Uh, we're both going to be rolling on the threes because they go right to two to three. I go left to three. Oh, and it's a mountain. So that actually means I roll on the one. It's still worth it though, because any damage I do is gonna is gonna wreck their. Sh no, actually, this is a stupid plan. This is a very stupid plan. Um, fuck. I didn't think that through. Because you're going to kick me two to the left. Which means with a four, the best I get is a two. And you get a three. Is that a big deal? I mean, it would just come down to the die rolls. It's like I got a lot else to do. Uh, that sounds, that may sound terrible, but it's accurate. I mean, I could just add another core. Like move from Port Said to Sinai. Or shit, even attack Bulgaria as the Brits. Like, only the BEF is restricted, right? Maybe that's worth doing. Maybe that is worth doing. And then we could even do, like, try to attack Sofia and get Bulgaria out of the war. And that's not the worst idea I've ever heard. It's a pretty dumb idea, but it's not the worst. Or I just get double sassy with my one op and I just retake Belgrade. Yeah, we'll do that. I retake Belgrade. We gain a VP and most importantly, that core is also out of supply. And you get the reverse out of supply designation because you're the blue space, not the gray space. So, I mean, hooray, we're taking out Austrian core. That's not exactly world-beating, but I guess it's better than nothing. And that's really all we've got to show for ourselves. So, uh, VPs do decrease, because I retook Belgrade. I can now reinforce Serbia for what good that's going to do me, which is not much. All right. So, the worst phase of the game, the attrition phase. One, two, three. That is an enormous kick in the junk. And that's going to cause so much havoc. Like, let me be clear on this. There are two bloody units left in France, and they're both core. And I have so many German armies and German core. This is probably it for the Allies. Barring some super amazing card that I don't even know that they have. Like, Germany explodes or something. Or they get nukes, uh, you know, 30 years ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, Verdun is still not besieged. Um, that's good news, I suppose. <clears throat> Speaking of sieges, let's roll in Riga. 
Our Riga is now destroyed. Which does annoyingly mean that it's going to be a little bit harder to kick Russia out of the war. Because now they have 5 VP. And there's only 3 left that are Russian. Uh, but whatevs. Um, any other sieges going on? I think just the one. Yeah, because Paris just got raffle stomp. And then these do get removed from the game as well. I'm just going to delete these. I have infinite numbers of them. So you're out of the game, which then frees up my flanks to do other interesting things. Uh, that's good news, I guess. And that concludes that phase. And war status hasn't changed. Replenishments for the allies. Uh, I can and will reinforce this British unit because London is still fine. I can't use France's unit, so it's wasted. I can do things with Russia. What would I like to do with Russia? Probably recreate an army. That actually sounds like a great idea. And let's recreate it in the... in Kharkov. That makes sense. Okie dokie. Um, Central Powers, they do get one from Walter Rothau. They do get to do one RP. So they're going to reinforce their army here. They're going to go boop. Now, Germany does have no core in this box, which means if they lose an army, it's dead. Uh, that's a little disconcerting, but it's not enough for me to care when Germany's path to victory is very, very bright right now. Um, let us draw our cards. Okay. Now this... This actually does offer a potential, not a game saver. That's actually more important, getting more British forces in. And I have the Royal Tank Corps. I don't have over there, unfortunately. I think that card's actually in the discard pile. So I can't get... I can't basically play reinforcements. But I can at least get the U.S. into the war. So that's something. It's not a lot, but it's something. Um... Let's wrap as Germany. Did I get Fall of the Tsar? I sure as shit did. Um, oh, I, I did make my attack with, no, I didn't make an attack with Italy. So I actually lose, gain, they gain a VP. Um, I really want to try to get, if we can manage it, I don't know that we can, is the Bolshevik Revolution card already in the discard pile? It is not. So, I'm going to go ahead and discard combat cards in an attempt to draw that additional card. So I get to, I discarded three combat cards. I draw three more. Damon Blast. I didn't get it. Oh, well. I can still cause a lot of chaos to them uh, just with Fall of the Tsar and just, generally speaking, fucking up France. So.
I don't know this is going to be the last turn of the game, but it's awfully damn close if it's not. All right. And then I do need to roll for mandated offensives. Five and three. Nothing happens for them. Three is the Brits. Like, even getting the U.S. involved in the war, which, don't get me wrong, is not a tiny thing, is not going to be enough to save... is not going to be enough to save Germany. Or is not going to be enough to save the Allies. So... And did I mention that Fall of the Tsar also automatically lets you run ops? So good. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and play other event, Fall of the Tsar. And this is super bad news for the Allies. Now, um, I'd have to add one more VP in order to trigger Bolshevik Revolution, but I don't have the card, so I don't really care about that. I'm going to take that off and put that there, just so I can track it. And I'm also going to get the Fall of the Tsar token, and I'm going to put it next to Russia. Oh, I also instantly get a VP. Because that's what the card says. If I had done it when Romania was still neutral, I could have gotten three VP out of it. But this is just a reminder to me that it now costs one op. It now costs an extra op for every unit beyond the first. So that's just gonna that's gonna drastically slow my ability to attack as Russia. And I get five ops. What a power play! All right. Let's cause some havoc, shall we? All right, step one. I'm going to start picking up the easy VPs using cores. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. That just gave me two VP. One, two. Um, I'm going to take this army. I'm going to go one, two, three. And I just took another VP. Because I just captured uh, Orléans. Which also, by the way, means no more French reinforcements. Hmm. Um, I'm going to activate Paris for attack, and I'm going to attack this one core in Amiens. And I'm going to activate Sedan for attack and attack Cambrai. Um, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to... I'm going to do the attack in Amiens first, because if I win, um, Cambrai is out of supply. Which means I can then do other things with that army. Uh, do the allies have any kind of combat card that they would like to play? That's a British attack. Nope. Okay. It's going to come down to a die roll, and frankly, I don't care whether I win it or not, because I'm almost certainly going to do enough to do some damage. Like, as long as I get, as long as I get anything but a 1, um, this unit is defeated. I got a 2. Yes, they got a 6, but they only had a 1, which means it just reduces. Which is actually kind of annoying. Because that means that, uh, yes, this unit is removed, but I can't advance because he actually did more damage because we did the same amount of damage. So that was only two moves. No, it was three moves, sorry. 
But here's four activate Chateau Terry. One, two. Now he's cut off. Uh, that's another VP for taking Amien. I still have one more. Um... Like, I'm just going to be able to just raffle stomp France. There's just nothing they can do about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and place them out of supply for right now. Um, I need to put the unit on top so that I'm aware. And the best part is, if a unit is out of supply... Um... They can still fight, but they can't use any combat cards. And yeah, that's it's it's not a threat to me whatsoever. I mean, sure, the British may have more forces they can bring in from London, but that's not going to be enough to solve to save them uh, at all. That was four units. Yes, one, two, three, four. And Rouen just fell. Was that four or five? I think that was five. It might actually only be four, but I'm gonna say for the argument that it's four, that it's only that it is five because I frankly lost count. So that's bad news for them. The Brits don't have a choice. They have to get the U.S. into the war and see what options that provides for them. If the Zimmerman telegram even would do anything, you know, that's a really great question. Um, So it counts as an active nation for the Allied power, and I want to see where, if there's any units that the U.S. gets at the beginning. No, they only come in through reinforcement cards, so even playing the Zimmerman Telegram won't make a difference. Like, not at all. So yeah, the Zimmerman Telegram does literally nothing for them. Um... That's rough. Uh, they're going to go ahead. Oh, I did not advance the turn track, did I? There you go. Uh, well, they're going to go ahead and play um, British reinforcements. That does tip this over into 30, which means Zimmerman Telegram is now permitted. And they get one army and one core. Is that going to be enough to change anything? Wait, what? Oh, I screwed up. This card should not exist. I should have removed it from the game. I'm going to do that right now and then draw another card. <sighs> Which means uh, I cannot use a Zimmerman Telegram because I don't have a way to increase the war status value. Which means I have to do something else. I can't play French Reinforcements. Because even though they can technically play cards if Paris is taken, but only if Orléans is not, and it is. I could play Royal Tank Corps, but that's not going to do much. I can't reinforce. Like, there's literally only one reinforcement I could bring them, which is two core. And I can strategically redeploy to get them into the game... 
and I can try to do something. Like, I can retake Calais, which would instantly free the unit in Canberra. It's not nothing. So I'm going to play a different British reinforcement card. I'm going to bring in the Australian and the Canadian Corps. Which are right here. And they're both going to be off the map in the British box. I wonder what this four means on the Canadian and the Australian Corps. Are they like stupidly expensive to activate? Sorry, give me one second here. What is the four about? Oh, is it about how they enter the game? Movement, BEF, core, and army. Is it just about loss priority? It might just be about loss priority. Let me check that section of the, of the manual. Yep, that's all it means, okay. Cool story, bro. I need to check something. I know the BEF got wiped out. Does it mean the BEF core can never come into the game? Or what? Maybe it can just never come into the game. That'd be pretty rough. Let's see, I think it's in losses. Yeah, the only, only because the BEF army was eliminated because it couldn't retreat, the core never comes into the game. That's rough. That is pretty doggone rough. All right, I guess that's the turn. Uh, we're going to remove that from the game. And then, sorry, you go back and the allies go back one. All right, Central Power's turn. Russian desertions would be so brutal right now. I love everything about it. Like, just wreck these armies right here. But I think I'd rather do ops. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this card for ops. And here's what I'm thinking. I do not want the British screwing this up for me. I can't take London. I cannot stop them from bringing in reinforcements. Uh, alas. But what I can do is just keep taking VPs. Like, just take so many VP that there's that there's nothing that they can do regardless of where I take them from. So I'm going to take this army from Paris. I'm going to go 1-2 and take Lahav. Now, remember, automatic victory only happens at the end of the turn. That doesn't instantly mean that the central powers win. 
But it means that they will win if they don't take a VP back. Um, what else can they do? Where else can I snag some free VP? I could pull this. Oh, I still haven't taken Verdun, have I? I'm going to move you up into Matt, from Matt's into Verdun, and you're going to siege that. We'll try to take that at the end of this turn. Not that it'll matter, but it might. Um, That was two. I still got two more units to move. Um, You're just a trench. Interesting. I mean, is it that interesting? I guess it's not that interesting, but it is kind of interesting. What else? How else can I pick up free VP? I could take Bucharest and wreck Romania. I mean, it's a 4v2. There's certainly no reason not to try it. Because I just moved two units, right? Yeah, let's do it. Bulgaria's going to attack Bucharest. Um, 4v2... Uh, the allies do one damage. I do one damage. That didn't accomplish much. Oh, well. That concludes my turn. As Britain, I have one chance and one chance only, and that's dumping these two core onto the battlefield. I do have this card, this combat card. Or heck, just create, do the Arab National Army so that I can try to take Medina. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I can't play it because it counts as a stupid British reinforcement. Oh no. All right, then. I guess we're doing strategic redeployment with the biggest, fattest card I can manage. Like, I can bring this core and I just can't do anything with it. Like, I mean, okay, actually, I can do whatever I want to with it. But, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to play Zimmerman Telegram. Not to do the thing, but to do the other thing. For strategic redeployment, I'm going to bring in five core. I'm going to go one, two, three. Although, I think if I bring in the PT core, does it go somewhere specifically? I'm going to feel real dumb if it does. I'm going to feel stupid dumb. Uh, reinforcements. Um, I'm checking the core rules for reinforcements. No, there is actually no other. They go except for the SN core and the ANA core. So yeah, okay. Okie dokie. Um, so I placed those three core. I use strategic redeployment can be anywhere else that's friendly, right? 
because I can redeploy by sea. I'm going to pull these two core out of Greece. And I'm going to drop them off in... Uh, in a Cherbourg, really. There we go. So now they can try to capture some of the easier uh, spaces. But then obviously Germany's got the, the right to just counterattack and keep wrecking their shit. Um, so that is their turn. Because I'm pretty sure that the British can strategically redeploy by sea. I need strategic redeployment cards. Here we go. Yeah, any other friendly port. So at the start and then end of one there. Okay. Cool story, bro. Okie dokie. All right, let us switch back to Germany. Central powers. Now I do have to worry about this and the incoming threat of three more core just sitting there. So I'd like to be in a position where we can cause them no end of grief. Which basically means blocking every easy victory point space. Which basically means, like, I don't have uh, HL take command. So I'm going to go ahead and play this for ops. So I'm going to go. One, two, three. Uh, we'll leave a central powers token on non C. Any other easy VP to grab as the central powers? It's going to take so long to get this army over here. I might as well just spend an entire turn blowing, like, the Zeppelin Raids card to move it. So anyway, that's just one. That's one, two, three. Then I'm going to go one, two, three. Um, again, I don't have to have a unit there to cut off supply. I just had to have had the unit there at one point until somebody retakes it. Um, so that was two units. Let's reinforce... You, one, two, three. Oh, no, I can't do that. Then I won't siege. Fair done. But it doesn't matter, right? As long as they don't get at least one VP back, I win. So I'm going to do one, two, three. I'll leave me with one more. Uh, one more op. You know what? I'm going to start the process of trying to get you over to French territory. One, two, three. There we go. It's all about that movement. I have every possible VP in France other than Verdun and Cambrai. Good times. All right. Um... That's it for that.
So to even get the game to last one more turn, we have to take a VP back. And the Central Power player has quite cleverly blocked any easy route for me to do that. Because the best I can do is I can go from Cherbourg to saint Amand, But then they just attack with the German army and beat us up. Yeah, there's really no easy way to go. Now, there is one ever so tiny option that might be enough to change things. If I can make them retreat from Orléans, I have a place then to drop in the French 7th Army. Is the 7th Army going to be enough to save the game? I really don't know. But that's really their only option. So I need to get some ops going. I'm going to go and play USA Reinforcements because frankly I'm not even sure that we'll survive the turn. So we're going to go one, two, three, then one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. So that was two of my four ops. Um, remember, if I move more than one rushing unit, it takes two ops. Um, Opening a road to Sophia wouldn't be the worst idea. I mean, I could attack them at Gaza here. And then in a couple of turns, get, get Damascus. I guess that's an option. So let's do that. Let's go one. And then uh, Sinai Pipeline belongs to the Allies. And then I've got one more op to spend. Um, can I do anything with Russia? Like anything at all? I can only move one unit uh, because of the fall of the Tsar rules. Um, let's just go one. If they're going to attack Kiev or Odessa somehow, that makes that a little bit harder to accomplish. All right, back to Central Powers. Um... Probably more ops is the way to go. Maybe be a giant douche and dig in and orly on, but I can't do that. You have forced my hand. 
Uh, uh, Britain, you have forced my hand. I cannot ignore this, because if I do, they simply sweep around Orleans and reclaim at least one VP. That's all they need to do in order to stay alive. I need to snuff it out. I need to snuff out any chance they could possibly have of success. So I'm going to take 11th Army for two ops. And I'm going to attack Tours with Orléans. And I'm going to attack Le Mans with Rouen. Do I have any combat card I would like to use? I do not. Do the allies have any? They do have severe weather, but that's not actually going to help them here. Because, yes, it is fall, but I'm not attacking into a mountain spot. So there are no combat cards. And if the dice are kind, this may buy the allies another turn, but it's pretty unlikely. So we're going to start with this attack because it's this is the one that's more likely to fail. It's a five versus a six on the core table. Uh, so the, a five on the army table is going to be two losses, but a six, a five on the six here is actually going to cost three losses. So uh, that kicks him back to Orleans. That does weaken him, but they are going to lose two units of their own. Honestly, two full-strength cores is better than three half-strength cores. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the Canadian. Oh, no, I have to I have to allocate it to the Canadian core. That gets removed from the game. Sorry, Canadians. It doesn't get removed from the game. It just gets defeated. And then this happens uh, over here. That's going to be six on the army versus three on the core. That does do two losses, uh, which actually is going to take out a core. That's the worst they can do, but I deal a lot more than that to them. That's five on a six. That's five losses. These core are just wiped out. I mean, they're not wiped out. They could come back, but they go to the eliminated box. Um, so that's it for that turn. Back to the allies. Now... If I am the allies, I have a very, very strong incentive to attack in Orléans. <clears throat> it's certainly not a guarantee of success, right? But again, if I defeat Orléans, not only do I stop the instant victory, but I, ca I create the possibility to bring France in using my French reinforcements card. And then things get a little bit more interesting. You could also argue, and you wouldn't be wrong, that that would be pretty risky. But here's what happens if I do nothing with this with these units. This guy goes here, this guy goes here, and both core are cut off. No, because I could I'd still have Poitiers. Um I mean, I, the thing is, next turn, they're going to attack me. And with an army strength of 8 and a core strength of 4, I'm not going to win that. I'm probably not going to win no matter what happens. This is probably it for... Oh, um... Rouen needs to be flagged, so I don't forget about it. I mean, this is probably it regardless of what happens. Um, the central powers are going to win this war. There's just not enough the allies could do. 
Um, but to have even a, a chance of making this game last past this turn, we have to get creative. And that means attacking an Orléans, re relieving that of German command, and hoping that I get a big enough loss number that I can drive him back to Meloon. Or past Meloon. Which would let me advance and then maybe attack Chateau Terry. And free this core in Cambrai. Because I have this mine attack. And I get a plus one if I do it. So I mean I have sword of options if I do that. But Russia's basically stopped. Uh, that's what the fall of the Tsar has done. I don't have another way to really take another VP. Krakow is too far away. Uh, I could attack Vienna, but it would cost me three ops, and I'd probably lose. Like, this is 9v8. That is not enough to make any significant difference and because of the way their just the two capital system works, there's no incentive for me to take Vienna except the fact that it's a VP. That's the only incentive. Now I could try some funky stuff to run up to Breslau and take that, but it would take me two ops, and I I think we have to be a different kind of aggressive. So I'm going to go ahead and play. I'm going to go ahead and actually play Mine Attack for two ops. No, I'm going to play Arab Northern Army for ops. I really wish I played that last turn now. Oh, well. This is life. I have three ops to play. Um... Getting a Russian army in position to try to take Sofia is actually kind of tempting right now. It's actually kind of really tempting. Or attacking Nice so that I could then go into Sofia. I think that's what I'll do with one of my ops. I'll do one, two, three. Oh, I need to place um, allied markers. What's the... Is there a, isn't there a, a tool tip for clone? Oh, it's control C. That makes sense. Clone. And then that hasn't actually been taken by me, but it also doesn't matter. There we go. The second ops, I'm going to attack Orleon. It is a four on three. We'll see what happens. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. I can't do it. I cannot, with only with only a double core of four units, I can never cause enough damage to wipe out this army. So then my best bet is just to be a dick. And, and force them to have to retake stuff from me. So instead of attacking, I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three. And then all of these revert to being allied. And I stick my, I stick my tongue out. That's 1918. One, two, three. Yep. I still have one more op to play. Um, I 
I could go retake Warsaw. But that's just going to get my army crushed. Probably. Let me move this army up. One, two, three, so it can actually maybe affect things positively. Now, at this point, I would normally be saying, damn it, I moved the army off of Verdun, which means it's no longer being sieged. Which means I can't even cut off their supply, which is extremely annoying. Well, not easily anyway. Um... Hmm. I need to get armies into position to cause some havoc. This is actually a fairly smart move. Um, and I'm actually running out of actions to take. Alright, so I'm going to go... One, Maloon is now back in Central Power's hands. No, sorry, they took three back, so yeah, 18. Can I get a unit to Verdun? Yes, I can get a core there. One, two, three. Uh, by the way, this trench is gone. That should have been removed as soon as I entered there. I don't care if that's not good enough to besiege. I'm just trying to make sure that they can't escape. That was two. Oh, I didn't actually play a card, did I? There we go. One, two, three, that's three units that have moved. Um, is Belfort allied? I think it is. No, it's not. Um, that hasn't actually been retaken. So that should still be there. So these units are now both cut off. These units are now out of supply and can no longer move. So I just need to bring around one more unit. One, two, three. And basically next turn is just going to be Raffle Stomp two out of supply units. And then that can't retreat. Because they can't move, right? And then we retake Barleduc and Dijon, and we win the game. Um, so back to the Allies. And they're like, well played, Germany. Well played. Um, I can't move these units. I can't move that unit. Orleon is still German controlled, so I still can't take it. They have no other units to transfer. I mean, they could strategically redeploy from Port Said. Oh, I never rolled this stupid thing again, did I? Yeah, sorry friends. I think I'm starting to just reach the point where the game is almost over, so I'm making mistakes. Uh, here we go. You technically fire on a two because of your trench. That's a four on a two, doesn't do enough damage. 
Uh, a two gets pushed to the left, but it's still a four. It's still enough to eliminate this army and wipe out the fort. Oh, I should be besieging that, shouldn't I? Yep. There we go. Okay. And I didn't do that last turn. I do have another card I can play. Um... I mean, I could get stupid. No, I actually can't attack at all because they're out of supply. Right. right, 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 right. That's the problem I keep having here. Hitting Nice and then trying to take Sophia next turn might be the order of the day. It's about the only damn option I've got. If I am the allies and I just want the turn the game to last one more turn and hope I get a really crazy card out of it. Um But here's the thing. I need to get an army into Verdun. Uh I will do that next turn. If they're done falls, I have 21 VP, and even Sophia won't matter. And because I didn't play the ANA, I can't take Medina. Which is really rough, because that would have been a pretty sweet free VP. And there is no other victory point I can get to quickly enough as the Allies. I can take Sophia. And if I took Sophia, which is certainly not a guarantee, that's one. And somehow. Ah, but then Germany can just start taking Italian VPs. Heck, Austria could have been doing that. I mean, you have to siege Trent. It's certainly not a guarantee, but yeah, you could literally just take two core and go one, two, three. You'd need to take three core, actually, but there's just too many options um, for the central powers. These units got trapped out of supply. I knew it was going to happen, but I didn't have another option. Because if it didn't take at least three uh, victory points, the game was guaranteed to end. They take these two back. Now, will Cambrai switch sides? It will automatically defect to me anyway. So you know what I'm going to do, friends? Because I'm going to gain a minimum of 3 VP, pushing me at 21. And the best the allies can do is gain 1. I'm going to go ahead and declare the central powers the winners. Because these will just automatically flip. Uh, all three spaces will just flip, even if I do nothing. Uh, and the best that the Allies can do... I mean, they could try a massive charge on Vienna. But that's, again, 1 VP. So, yeah. I think we just go ahead and call the series. Whew. This was a long game. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I didn't make too many goofs that really wrecked your enjoyment of the game. Um, I love this game to death. It's such a good game. So fantastic. It is, with the possible exception of War of the Ring, my all-time favorite two-player war game. Um, 
And I like For the People, but I love Pals of Glory. I I just love it a lot. Um, we we countered history. Um, and you know what? At the end of the day, a lot of different things could have gone differently. They really could have. This is why I lost as the Allies. I didn't do enough replenishment points. I kept forgetting about it. But more importantly, I had other things I had to use my cards on. Um, but yeah. The moment Verdun fell. Not even the fortress. The fortress doesn't matter. I need to get rid of the armies in the fortress. Which is exactly what happened historically. Um, the German strategists were on record saying that we didn't care if we took the fortress. They deliberately encircled that fortress because they knew France would have to defend it. Sorry, that's in, um... No, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's World War I. Because Verdun was an important fortress in the Franco-Prussian War. It was, like, one of the few places that held out. It's where, uh, it's where some people won their stripes, yada, yada, yada. They knew that... France would defend Verdun to the last man. And so Germany attacked it deliberately because they cared about the armies, not because they cared about the territory. But we've reached the end of the series. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week, we're going to play, I think, apropos Versailles 1919. Although that game presupposes that Germany won or lost this, and the Central Powers quite clearly won, despite losing most of Austria. So I think that's a pretty interesting turnout for the way things happened. Until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching. And on behalf of the Allies, I bid you good day. That was a weak table flip. SMH. <laughs>